Thank you, Father, for who you are and what you do. We love you, we honor you, we respect you, and we thank you, God, that you are such an awesome God. God, you are excited about our future. You are excited about our destiny and that what you have for us. Help us to see what you see, Lord, and even if we don't understand, that we will just surrender by faith and know that you have only the best for us. Thank you that we can stand with your word today. Come and touch our lives, each one of us. May we be arrested by your perfect plan, even in today. So we pray. Amen. Amen. We are talking about Acts 10, my prophetic day word for Sunday. And I just want to read one specific verse at this stage. Chapter 10, verse 2. Talking about the house of Cornelius. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing he gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Four facets. And I want to say your general testimony. The testimony of your life, how people are supposed to be able to remember you. And in this context, four facets being mentioned here. And I believe those four facets God wants to lift out and emphasize today for me and for you. First one, devotion. There's a devotion, there's a dedicated, dedicatedness, uh, dedication from the family. When you can give yourself, what are we talking about? It's, it's you giving yourself at the cross of Christ. So the first point I want to say, your life before the cross. There's a devotion that you can give because of the blood, because of the cross. If it's not for the cross, it's only dead works. If it's not for the cross, the word of the cross, it can become the power of God in your devotion, the power of God in your repentance, the power of the blood that brings the authority of forgiveness through. But there's no devotion if the cross is not in the center. But your devotion to God is not in vain. It's not religion. It's not dead works. It's not a lot of religious rubbish when it is all about the cross of Christ in the center. He gave himself full out. He was dedicated to the will of the Father, Jesus Christ. He was loyal. He was faithful to the end. My question then is, do you attach yourself in such a way to God's plan, to who he is, to what he has for your life? People must be able to say that about you. That, that is, that's the kind of lifestyle that you have. Before the cross of Christ, where you stand amazed at how he gave himself, and that so you can give yourself, that you are able to surrender your heart and your everything to him. Let it be so in Jesus' name. A repentance lifestyle, not just to say sorry, but that every time in repentance you go to the next level of what God has for you. That after repentance you stand amazed at his grace, at his love, at that what he has for you. The prodigal son when he came home, he stood amazed in his repentance. Many times in our repentance we think, I will go back to God and I will do this. I'm not worthy to be called a son, but I will serve like a servant. And then I go home and I just start to serve as a servant. I don't meet up with the father. And I don't hear the Father speaking to me. And there I go from a place of repentance into my Father's house. But I'm working there somewhere as a slave. Because I didn't run to my Father, hear his heart, hear what he has to say to me. And what he will do, it will surprise you. So with every form of repentance, every form of coming closer to him, more of him, less of me. God will surprise you if you walk with him. If you allow him to speak from a place of the forgiveness that he's giving you. Before the cross, it's a life of surrender. Surrendering everything. God-fearing. It was a family that they, know, they knew how to dedicate themselves to God, but also... They were God-fearing. In what way? Yes, the devil feared and he ran. Me and you, 
the fear of God be on our lives, that we will have such an awesome respect for God. God fearing, this family, they had a respect for God. They honored him with amazement. It's not just the acknowledgement of authority, the presence of authority, but standing amazed at the presence of authority. There's a pattern for life. There's a lifestyle with discipline. When I'm part of a God-fearing family, if, if the fear of God is on my life, I choose a pattern to live by. I make sure that I know what is the way that he wants me to live, not because of a performance, not because of stress, not because of fear that I will not be accepted, but God-fearing family. I'm part of the family of God, God-fearing family, because I respect him, because I honor him. He is my God, and I don't want to compromise in anything of that. And because I don't want to compromise in anything of that, that's why I say, God, is. what is the protocol in your presence? I need to have good manners in his presence. I need to respect and behave in the right way, in a certain way, in my father's house. Let it be so that there will be such a respect and that we will learn it even in our families as we learn how to respect one another so that we understand how to respect our Father God as we are living in His home, in His house. Let it be so in Jesus' name. <coughs> God fearing, it's your life before the throne. It's your life before the throne. A life before the throne where you know the protocol, where it's about relationship in love, where it's about the mandate that you receive from God, where you have respect where it's not talking back, where it's not about arguing about stuff, where it's I respect, I'm accountable, I'm responsible, I take it, I go and I do. It's to hear and obey. That's my life before the throne. You have a life before the cross, you have a life before the throne. We see in 1 Corinthians 2, 2. Paul says, I want to know nothing among you except Christ and Him crucified. Christ in the throne room. Christ crucified on the cross. Yes, He's not on the cross anymore. But I need to understand I, my life, I'm crucified with Christ. But my life is hidden in Christ, the living Christ, the resurrected Christ. So there's a life where I must remember Christ crucified. And there's a life also in me that I must understand the resurrected Christ. May you know nothing except Christ crucified, your life before the cross, and Christ, the resurrected Christ, as you live before the throne. Before the cross and before the throne. Number three, generous giving, the whole family. That was part of the normal general testimony. That is generally known by everybody that you're a man, you're a woman, that there's a generosity in you. You can give, you have an open hand. And not giving to the poor because, ah, oh, shame, look at them. Maybe I must give him something. No, that wasn't God's heart. Ah, oh, shame, look at that little thing there. Let me give something to him. No, God gave everything to you because he loves you. And so you give your life to others. You give your life to the people, to the nation. Because you love them. You see it as an honor. It's not like, oh, shame, let me help the poor a little bit. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven. It's me and you, the poor. Without Christ, we're not just poor. We are nothing. And God gave us everything. Not just because he felt sorry for us. But because he had such a pure beautiful awesome love for me and you and because of a pure beautiful love for people that's why you give with your time your prayer your energy your finances as god would lead you you give and you take the challenge to give let that be your testimony your general normal testimony <coughs> I want to ask you, as I said, with the first two facets, 
It's your life before the cross, your life before the throne. Here I want to ask you, how practically productive are you on earth? If there is not a giving, if you are not a giver with what you have and who you are, you are definitely not practically pr productive on earth. For God so loved the world that He gave. For God so loved the world that He positioned Himself as a giver. As a giver. John 3.16 let it be so that you so love God and people and yourself that you gave that you gave number four regular prayer they pray to God regularly prayer what's that that's your position your spiritual stature in the spiritual realm you have a position and that's from the place of prayer that's a place where you declare your dependency on God. You say, I'm dependent on God. Show me your prayer life and I will show you if you are really dependent on Him. It's a place of relationship. Prayer is not, I come, I put a prayer, I put a request there and I want an answer like an ATM. No. Prayer is always in the context of relationship. Your testimony in prayer will be in the context of relationship. Not how, how many prayers were answered in the way that you wanted it to be answered. If prayer is not in the context of relationship, how will you understand and interpret the answers? Because God always answers, but always in the context of heart-to-heart -heart connection and relationship according to His dream and what He sees for your life. Even though you try to articulate through prayer, what you believe must come to you or must change in or around you. Regular prayer. It's a place to acknowledge in humility the role you need to play and the role He has in your life. The role that He will have in your life. You need to find it in a place of prayer. My question then, if we said you must be practically productive on earth in uh, your generous giving of yourself my question here with prayer is how practically productive are you in the heavenlies you need to be practically productive in heaven in prayer we say on earth as it is in heaven and we are seated with christ in heavenly places so what are we doing if we say, I need to be productive in the heavenlies? What is in heaven? Through your prayer, there's some deposits made for generations, for your children, your family, for your friends. You've been productive. When you really had a productive and excellent time of prayer, you've been productive in the heavenlies. And there's some deposits made in heaven it's a setup it's a place where you set up contracts where you complete the contracts where you sign contracts in the spirit in what you declare in what you believe in how you agree with god's word and how you agree with his promises and how you're standing on god's word and that what he has for you how you stand on truth and stand against that what is not from from him with legal contracts that you set up through prayer how productive are you in the heavenlies? It's a place for meeting, meetings, counsel, counsel, to find counsel, strategic meetings, strategic planning. How productive are you in your strategic planning that must happen in the heavenlies, that must happen between you and God? Where God speaks to you, you speak to Him. But it's in a spiritual realm, not just spiritual realm here. But with Christ in heavenly places. That from that place you strategize, you plan, you get the counsel. You not just get the ideas, you get the mandate. 
And if you can be productive in the heavenlies, if you can be productive from that place, yes, productive you will be here on earth also. Let it be so. It's a place where there's a time for fellowship, a time for friendship, a time for family to be, where you're supposed to meet in the spirit your family way in the spirit in prayer you can see your brother your sister your parents your children whoever i'm not talking about people already in heaven i'm talking about how in prayer you will stand with that what god has for them and in that place that's where your your association in your heart is your your memory of you and that person is not first of the situation that you had the conflict that you had the memory that you have with you and your son, you and, and your friend, is where you brought that person before the Lord. With an atmosphere and a heart of appreciation, thankfulness. That is the place how you remember and how you, first of all, find yourself with friends and family. Be productive in the heavenlies. Times to be still in amazement. It's in that place where you need to learn how to be still and stand amazed at who He is. And if you can understand how to be still and amazed at who He is in prayer, then you will be able to do it practically on earth in situations where you will see God, see His glory, see His, see His pattern, see His principle, see His beauty in situations and relationships and creation all around you. And you will have that capacity to be still and just take that precious moment with you and god prayer is a place to push through for breakthroughs to push through for breakthroughs for many things to be birthed be productive in the spirit be productive in the heavenlies be practically productive on earth in how you give yourself here on earth and be practically productive in the heavenlies in how you have an excellent prayer lifestyle. What happened with Cornelius and Peter? Oh, they had appointments, they had strategic planning. When they, they were in prayer and the angel manifested, they were in prayer and God showed himself and gave certain strategies how things must happen, how the paradigms had to be shifted about the heathen and what God wants to do among them. How it was said, there's men that will come, you need to go with them. Or oh, to Cornelius, send men to that place and there's a man and he must come and he must help you. God wants to give so much more practical strategies in prayer. Where you will be in prayer and suddenly the angel will speak. Suddenly God will speak and there will just be such a lot of practical strategies coming on the ground for you. If you learn how to be practically productive in the spirit practically productive in the heavenlies practically productive where you are seated with christ in heavenly places may that be your life and may that be my life god come and change us in the mighty name of jesus help us lord to have this general testimony in simplicity that people will be able to say that but that we will be able to say that with boldness about our own lives with a thankfulness God, teach us how to have a life before the cross. Teach us how to have a life before the throne. Lord, and help us, by your grace, to be practically productive on earth in our giving, giving of ourselves as you gave everything as you came to earth. And God, also help us to be practically productive in heaven. On, in heaven, so let it be on earth that we will understand every prayer that was prayed every deposit that was made even in the previous generations of our lives with our ancestors lord let it be done on earth as it was deposited in heaven through prayer and intercession and faith proclamation even let it be so for us our children our children's children and that what you have for us in this season. God, come and surprise us. Come and surprise us in that what you're going to do. We thank you for who you are. And thank you for the divine appointments that you're going to have in this season like never before with us as your children. So we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen.